Here's a little video of me here doing a little bit of organizing with my tool shelf. This is not the tools I bring out with me on jobs. It's just some extra things I have, a few things I'm organizing. Right here, oh, also, first off the bat, this thing here, there's heat shields in the wall. None of this is hot, so don't worry about the tools or things I'm keeping here. Things like caulk I keep down low because there's no heat down here. That would be extreme. A little bit of heat from the stove pools up on top. That's why I don't put anything sensitive right next to it. Like keep the cleaner over here. Not on the top shelf. It gets pretty hot. But none of this, this is all actually cool to the touch. So today I bought this. This is a box from Harbor Freight. Thought I'd do some organizing so I don't have to carry a ton of boxes with me. Usually I have a bunch of boxes with me in a tool bag. So I thought this would be good for going out and doing some work. Some of the common things I need to use. Wire crimps are used on almost every new job of electrical work. This is how you connect your grounding wire you put this over the twisted wire and crush it with your pliers and it's never coming undone. Common to use all these parts. Right here you got the normal you got the normal nails or the normal tacks here when you're doing most typical electrical work. This is for the little bigger 30 amp wire. And here's a bunch of Romex connectors, small ones. And this bigger one would probably be used for this 30 amp wire. Not too common when you use a wire this big, unless you're wiring the circuit going to the stove in the house. That would be this bigger connector. Those are all common things. Another common thing that I want to put in here is 832 threaded screws and 836. Those are some of the most common ones we use doing electrical work. 810 is what you use if you strip out the hole for... Um, 6, 8. Is that the one? No, I meant to say 632. 632 screw. I just got confused there. Yeah, so if the if you have the 832 and you strip out the hole, we got a tool, you force thread it in there, and it makes new threads that are a little bit bigger for the 1032. Yeah, I'm a little tired. Also, yeah, I bought this box because it's actually pretty nice for this stuff. It's possible by the bottom I might hot glue it a little bit because I noticed if you're in here digging through it, it's easy to catch yourself on the wall and pull it up and they spill through. At first I was going to use this for mostly screws, but I decided to use it for the bigger stuff because small stuff, like I said, it kind of slips through the bottom. But that's my most common stuff. Screws 832 and 632, I should have them in there. It's pretty common when you misplace one or lose one, drop it in a construction site, you can't find it. And this box will be for less common stuff. Usually, sometimes I need one of these. There'll be a fixture that randomly doesn't have it or a fixture that's being reused that doesn't have it. But pretty uncommon to need that on every job because usually when we're putting metal boxes in, at least the boxes we use, they actually come with this already and it never comes out of the unit. You wrap the wire around it and tighten it down. Very simple. Don't need the grounding screws too much. And this box will be for these less common things. Don't have to carry that around all the time. What else would go in there that's less common? Probably that bigger Romex connector, things like that we don't always use. Odds, oddball size wire nuts. Right here I just bought some more tools. I get these at the Harbor Freight. And yeah, they actually work really good for wiring up things. Instead of buying those expensive 50 or more dollars a piece. Klein tools from like the Home Depot. I just get these. Depends what it is though, honestly. I would never trust screwdrivers or drill bits from the Harbor Freight. They wear down and strip out pretty fast. But these tools, they feel really good in the hand. This is the mo the more expensive brand that they sell over at the Harbor Freight. And these are actually really good ones. I like this brand here that they sell. Another needle nose. 
thought it'd be good to have those because I just bought more because my tools here I keep at the house. I just realized I misplaced one of the linesmen. And sometimes you need two big linesmen to do a proper um, splicing of wires, especially when they're bigger gauge, like 30 amp wire. Kind of hard to do that by hand or holding the wire and stripping it with only one. Here's my good strippers. Wire tester right here. I just had to buy this new one. Didn't even use it yet. Because right here. Just accidentally dropped this the other day and broke it. This is the one I've been using for years. I loved this electrical tester. You could just put it against the outside of the wire. Stick it into plugs and it would tell you if they're alive. I love that thing. This thing was really loud too. You could leave this thing at a plug on the second floor of a house. Run downstairs and go through all the breakers, figuring out what breaker that is. It was loud. Most of them these days aren't. Guess where I found the side of the road? Like 10 years ago. I think an electrical crew dropped it. It's a very good one, and I don't know how to replace it. Should try there. Actually going on the company's website. I'm sure they got one. It's my big measuring tape. You always need Sharpies on a job. I have a lot of random stuff here. Here's some connectors for conduit. I don't run conduit much. Usually the commercial jobs I take, it's mostly armored wire. Probably because they're existing buildings, just adding things in the ceilings. Some crowbars. See what I was using before? I want to like get these all in like one centralized box like that. These random things sitting around. I'm also cleaning out a lot of junk. I threw out a lot of stuff that I was just accumulating from jobs that I thought I would use, but it just becomes clutter when you don't find a purpose for it. Keyhole saw. Hacksaw. These for the Sawzall. I was actually going to maybe put some of these in there too. The random different screws and fasteners I have, but they slip through the bottom. I think it'll be easier just to keep them in the box. When you're doing a job, you're typically using only one thing anyways. I don't use stuff like this on jobs. That's more of carpentry tools, but these work good when you have to screw a new running board to concrete. Orange screws, I always use these on camping trips too because they're easy to find if you drop them in the snow and stuff. Use these a lot. Here's the construction screws you really want to put an electrical box onto wood with. Those are roofing screws. I bought that for that abandoned truck video we made a while back. And yeah, I didn't put a metal roof on that. A lot of people think the roof just blew off that thing because I held it down with cinder blocks. Truth is, it only overhanged a little bit on the truck, so the wind can't really catch it. That survived a 60 mile an hour wind or more microburst. All the trees around that truck fell over, but that survived those super strong winds that are pretty rare when we get them. Yeah, these are actually from that truck job putting together that stove contraption. Big sheet metal screws. Kept breaking off the heads of the little ones, so I used these and they went right through the side of the truck. That truck was really good quality. This can go in my miscellaneous nut. Yeah, I'm going to put miscellaneous stuff right here. The most two common sizes we can put in there. We don't use these big ones much at all. Unless we're splicing together like 50 amp wire. A lot of sheetrock screws there. These are the ones I think I may have actually been breaking off. Yes, it is. Those are absolutely tiny. Then we moved on to those. Never had to use those. That's what it was. What else we got? Electrical fishing right here. Again, I don't do conduit much, so... Since I bought that, the only job I ever did with that was fishing a heat cable through my drain line in the basement here. Hmm. Yep, just random electrical stuff. Look at these. What are these for? Are these for carrying groceries or are these 
What is this? That's what it is. This is for someone who doesn't want to touch doors on businesses and stuff. They're afraid of getting the COVID or something. Now, I bought this because it was only 15 cents, and for that price, you can't go wrong. I was thinking maybe I could find something around the house to use it for, or some kind of hanger, repurpose it. So that's why it's down here with my tools. Adjustable wrench. These are a bunch of old, like, rusty drill bits and stuff. These aren't the ones I actually use. I'll show you the ones I, the good ones I have. These are just incomplete sets and stuff I got from yard sales. I really do got to go through that, see what can fit into this. And then the rest I might just get rid of. This is really nice. This is like an aluminum block that somebody looks like they handmade it with a pair of metal stamps. And yeah, that's really cool. It looks homemade. Here's some drawers from an old, what's, what are these called? Spice drawers in a kitchen that I took apart and they went good down here on the shelves. This is just mi miscellaneous parts. Wow, this GFCI looks like it's actually used. See the how it's kind of worn down around the terminals? I brought that home because I could probably use it for myself. Took it out of somewhere, it was still functioning. This right here is a nice 20 amp switch. A lot of times I actually install these because people prefer them and I prefer them myself. It just feels tough. You know, and it actually makes a click, kind of like that. 15 amp ones are usually pretty quiet when they throw. This has to throw more aggressively because it's more power. 20 amp switch. You can always put a 20 amp switch on a 15 amp circuit, you know, because it's overkill. It's just disconnecting it. But you can't put a 15 amp switch on a 20 because it's a fire hazard. It's not made for that. Again, it's not disconnecting it as far as this. It's not built for it. The wires inside it aren't the right gauge to go through it properly, you know. These are the 15 amp switches. See how it doesn't... Makes a click when it goes up, disconnecting. No, that's connecting the circuit real fast. Yeah. 15 amp breaker this still works there's an x on it because it was supposed to not be turned on where it got taken out of the only time i've ever used these giant ones was connecting a 15 uh 50 amp circuit for a stove somebody cut it it like halfway to the breaker box and they upgraded the house to gas they wanted a gas stove then they went back to electric and this was cut halfway to the kitchen and I had to take from the breaker box, go into that, I had to couple them together and reuse the rest of the wire, which was not accessible because it went into a finished part of the house. So without it being invasive, we didn't replace the whole thing. And that old wire in the house is actually the old, the old way of wiring a stove. It only has three wires in it. It had the two hots and the neutral. And new stoves now have neutral ground and two hots. So that one had to be wired the old school way. This is just a bunch of blue boxes. And another GFCI. This is actually really cool. I saved this from a job. This was in someone's bathroom and they got rid of it. This is a... Alright, push this. The light comes on. Push this. The light shuts off in five minutes, ten minutes, you get it. It shuts off. It's a timer. This was on their fan, which is like the best idea in the world because you turn the fan on when you go in the bathroom as long as you want, and on your way out of the bathroom, hit like ten minutes. It keeps the fan running to get all the steam out of there so you don't get mold in your house. That's why if you go to a motel or hotels, a lot of times they wire it so you flip on the light and the fan has to be running when the light's on. That's so someone doesn't take a steamy shower and destroy their building. Just bought this for the laundry room because it always seems to get left on here. And there, there's like uh, two really bright lights. See, like this fan was the only thing here a couple years ago. I put all these lights in here, LED lights attached to the same switch. Just turns them all on at once. 
made this room nice and bright. These are for fire extinguishers, hanging them on the wall. I love industrial stuff, so I bought industrial 20-pound extinguishers and put them all over the house, hanging on the walls. Because out here in the country, we don't have fire hydrants or anything, and the fire department would take such a long time to even get to the house. So you want to have a lot of fire extinguishers. I got at least five of them that are working. And I think that might work, because normally in a house you have five-pound ones, the small ones you keep in your kitchen. But these ones, they can spray for quite a long time. Also, that's a good thing to have for chimney fires. I have one right outside the door in the hallway here. If there's ever a chimney fire, you open this thing immediately. And maybe, preferably, if you have fire gloves on, jam the hose up there and force that cosmic dust out of the extinguisher. It'll suck it up with the draft it already has. It'll put out the chimney fire. Just found that out. Someone said it's as simple as that. Because I was looking at, they sell these logs for a fire. That's not a log. It's basically a flare, a road flare. You just flick the end of it, you throw it in there, and as it burns, it makes a gas that displaces oxygen. And as the exhaust from that goes up there, it'll put out any fire. It says within 22 seconds. It's amazing. Yeah. I have a CLR log that I want to put in there. You're supposed to do it every two months, and I'm about to hit two months of using the stove. And supposedly with the catalytic stoves, you have to open the bypass because it will somehow mess up the catalyst. It'll put the fumes up, try to really cook the creosote into flaking off and just getting f blown up the chimney with little, you know, pieces of ash. Just lands in the woods, whatever, I guess. Found out the stove here, there might be a problem. It says you got to leave the damper open for like two weeks after. I don't know if you really have to do that. It, but it's, it says for the catalyst stove, leave the damper open two weeks. And I don't like that because there's no damper. Once flames start going up there, I don't want it really cooking that pipe. You don't want to run a stove with the... Mm. I have such a dry mouth and a sore throat, and I've only been filming in here 17 minutes. You know what I think it is? I have the door shut in here. I'm literally baking myself. The thermometer says it is 95 in here. I think I'm literally, and I'm right next to this thing too, I think I'm literally baking myself. I feel dehydrated and stuff just working in here for like the past half an hour with these tools. I need to get a drink. That's why I'm feeling kind of slow and sluggish. I'm just rambling on about random stuff here that I've collected and why I'm doing it. Here's a bunch of wire from <clears throat> random job sites. I sometimes reuse it at the house because wire is expensive. Some, some of that stuff, especially 30 amp wire, it's like $3 a foot. Over here, away from the wood stove, I keep things like earplugs so it doesn't dry them out because when they, when they expire or are exposed to heat... Yeah, they'll still work, but not as good. Here's my good drill set. Bunch of drill bits. This box up here are concrete bits, unibits, can of uh, canned corned beef from the 50s. I did open that in a video a while back. And this is also going to be in an old food video at some point. Found this Budweiser cans from 2008. And here's my good tools, bags, and stuff over here. That is the gray water line. I'm going to use that for a garden next year coming from the shower. And I'm going to shut this, fill the tub up, open the plug, let it back up to this with both of them shut. And while outside with a camera, I want to open that valve because I wonder how much silt has built up right there, you know, taking showers. Debris going by, or the debris going by gets stuck down here because it has a little weight while all the water goes over it. Thinking there might be like a pile of mud coming out of there when we open that up. That'd be kind of cool to see. As you guys can see, 
I love lights when I'm working right above this workbench. I got these 300 watt lights. Comes on with the bathroom light. Right here. Look at that. I got a toilet right here at my workbench. Isn't that cool? Keep working on stuff. Look at this. This is a Christmas present here. You got to pull the toilet paper out of the bear's butt to use it. Commercial sink too, like that. Yeah, so my nearest fire extinguisher is right there. By code, we're required to have one on each floor. There's three of them down here. Two of them upstairs. One in the garage. That one in the hall I just pointed out, that's actually a 10 pound. That's not a 20 pound one. I bought those things from a guy on eBay. I get them secondhand commercial ones because commercial ones you can recharge them at a good amount of fire departments. Fire departments a lot of times for free will actually recertify them for you. Because right now that one has a tag of 2020. I think every five or six years they have to be recertified. And that extinguisher is like 30 years old almost. And it, they keep recertifying it over the years. And that's why I got it so cheap. You get them really cheap online for like a third of the retail price. But those things last a long time. I have set off multiple vintage ones just for fun. I had one from the 50s, a couple from the 90s, a bunch from the 90s actually, and one from the 80s. I sprayed those just for fun because they were old and you know, you're not supposed to trust them. Every single one worked just as they were supposed to. As long as the gauge on there says it's full, it probably is. I've never had a problem with vintage ones working. So I would definitely trust these things after a few years. Now, the residential ones, I don't like those, because those are the ones sometimes known for being unreliable, and you can't refill them if you use them on the stupidest thing. Like one time I, a lot of times I will have an extinguisher out there when I'm burning in the property, so just in case a fire, a fire got out of control, I have a water extinguisher I bought on eBay too. Things like 40 years old, but you wouldn't know it was 40 years old. It's in great shape, and it's... Those are expensive, like 150 bucks. a water extinguisher. Cool thing about a water extinguisher is you can recharge it at home with a normal car pump right there on the back. Yep, that thing's full. But these things, you got to be careful. If you have guests at the house, they might use these things thinking they can use them on a cooking fire. They're not. That's just usually water in there. You can add dish soap so it foams up when you spray it. And sometimes you want to put RV antifreeze in there if you're keeping it in the garage because it is water. It'll freeze and break. I think it's really nice. It's in very good shape. I added the reflector on the back because I thought it was cool. Now, that's what a 20-pound extinguisher looks like. Big. And see the line right there pointing? That's another one. Look at this. I got this freezer a while back at Walmart. Good price. 67 60 off. Yeah, I always bring those. That water extinguisher, you'd be amazed. It can spray like 50 or more feet into the air. If a tree ever got an ember and started burning, I always keep an extinguisher out nearby when I'm doing fires. Unless it's drizzling or raining, then I don't, it's really not a potential for a fire to start up. But yeah, eBay. Extinguishers are cheap and get them recertified. Now, the only reason I brought that up Bought from the seller the first time, five pound ones. They were really good. They're still around now with 2019 tags, and they say full. They never lost pressure. Buy, I buy a four pack next of 10 pound ones. Those are around the house. I recently bought a, another four pack of 20 pound ones this time. Within a week, three of them have lost pressure. And I. Sent him back, and he refunded me for all four. I got to keep one out of it. That was pretty cool. And then I ordered another four-pack from him. One of them leaked. He refunded me 25%. The other three have yet to leak. That's one thing you got to watch out with. But if you guys run across this guy, you probably will. There's only two guys who sell bulk fire extinguishers online. Just send him a private message and tell him what happened. He's nice. He'll set you up with another one or refund it. Whatever you want. 
but he might ask for you f to return them, and he'll pay for the return if it's like all of them. Like I had to send back three. He actually wanted them back because he can. If he's gonna refund you, might as well he bring them back and fix the leak because they they're the ones recertifying those things and getting them up to run again. Obviously, the gasket was bad, or they did, didn't just you know screw it on enough. Maybe going over them really fast. I know they shouldn't be, because that's a life-saving device. What if someone put that in their closet? What if I put that in my pantry closet and wasn't looking at that gauge? Like, the average person's not going to go around looking at a fire extinguisher gauge. At least not a week after getting it. It's unexpected. I really do stock up on the discount shelf. Look at this. Carpenter ant killer. I was going to sprinkle it around the forest. Well, parts of it anyways. Away from the well and stuff. Because I have a lot of trees dying from carpenter ants. But then there's part of me saying, don't do it. Just let the carpenter ants kill them. Because carpenter ants are not an invasive species. They're supposed to be here. It's not like other bugs. And right here, I've never had a bed bug infestation, but I bought a bunch of bed bug killer because it doesn't just kill bed bugs. It may kill something they actually need out of the house. Like fleas or something. I had that a while back with the cat. I haven't had a problem since. First time that cat got fleas, we got the front line drips on the back of the head. No, actually, I went to Advantix because that works better in my opinion. For ticks too. We have ticks sometimes bad in the spring if it was wet the year before. Also bought this on the discount shelf. Look at this. There's two of them down there. Half off. Medicated goat dewormer pellets. So it's food, but it's also a dewormer. You know, I was thinking about getting a goat a while back, but the idea is out of my head right now. So I was thinking, maybe sprinkle that in the woods, I think. It'll help a deer or whatever eats it get deworm too but i'm gonna research that first to make sure animal all animals can eat that and make sure it's not a medication that'll make certain animals get sick i think a deer would be fine though it's just similar enough animal but i will do my research first what's in this drawer just the wall anchors for these shelves if you have children in the house, you want to anchor them so someone doesn't pull them down. Like, I could pull these things down if I tried to climb it. Extra washing machine hoses. Those were like 90% off at the Home Depot. Because no one uses rubber washing machine hoses anymore. They're considered the weakest part of your house. And if there is ever a leak, it's probably going to be this thing at its coupling that pops. Weakest part of your plumbing in the house. So now everyone uses steel braided ones, which have gone down a lot in price over the years since everyone's using them now. But compare to these, four bucks, I mean six bucks or so for a set of two four foot hoses, which is standard. Compared to a four foot, the other ones, you can pay like 16 bucks a piece the other way. But it used to be a lot worse. But that's good for the insurance. But the, I use these for non-pressurized applications like the dehumidifier drip line that goes right through the wall. But that'll probably not have to be replaced for a decade. Yeah, this basement, if you see the perimeter drain, it has a moisture problem. And without that in the summer, mold would grow. Years ago when I moved here, this was a beautiful bedroom. It was so sad having to rip out the beautiful real wood paneling, nice green carpet. It was mold behind the walls because of that problem. The basement wasn't finished properly. They didn't even have the studs at the bottom of the studs. I think it's what's it called, the sill of the wall? I don't know. But that was not pressure treated and was all rotten from the moisture and stuff. Half of the basement still finished with that same problem but there's no mold over there for some reason just this side of the building guess there's more moisture here because it's the back of the hill that was sad having to tear those rooms out and a beautiful bathroom there too tore that out didn't put the tub back yeah giant pile of hand sanitizer good to have that in the car
always good to have that in the car because you never know. Just wipe your hands off whenever you get dirty. I just use it more like a soap that evaporates, you know. I get dirty a lot. Look at this. We can find some great deals. Look at this. Normally $3 out of for $0.10. Cents. Always looking for those discount shelf deals. See these? Gigantic bottles of soap for like, I use it at the dispenser of the kitchen sink and bathrooms here. Dollar each. You know how many years that's going to last me? Soap doesn't really go bad, so it's like a decade worth of the dispensers around the house. I think all this stuff was discounted. Some of it anyways. This, I'm looking for tags. We got $2 from eight sixty. Some of them got tags. I know they do. I wouldn't have bought this random stuff. I know I got it at discount. Yeah, like this one has a tag. Harbor Freight also sells a lot of really nice tarps. They won't last multiple years out in the elements, but for my camping videos, I bought a bunch of these. Use them for a little while. Plus, I gotta cut holes in them sometimes if I make homemade hot tents out of them. But then when I'm done with my camping video, I bring them home and I cover wood piles with them. After like a year or so, they'll start fraying and then they go in the trash. I think I'm going to do a lot more camping videos starting this year. People seem to really like them as the culverts seem to... Can't find as many anymore because some of those things take decades to get those blockages accumulated. Alright, so we're down in this room right now. I'm going to show you some things in here. This is my office is where I film one of my YouTube channels. Here's my post 10 and my other channels where we open the old food contents, play buttons. Keep those right there. I actually just did some cleaning. These shelves are so empty now. There's like random things that shouldn't be in here in the office. There's a tarp. Broke my tripod recently. I got to actually fix that tomorrow. Here's how I charge my stuff. Top needs to be charged. Middle is charging. Bottom, everything down there is fully charged. These cameras were in an accident and they got severely wet. I'm pretty sure they'll still work, but they're down there to dry. These are my bins where I just pack things up when I need to go on a trip. That's the mattress that gets thrown in the car when I need to sleep overnight. Here's my little desk area. Right here is just some weights I've been lifting every morning. It makes me... Feel a little better. Mm. Yeah, here's this was on the discount shelf, half off. This is a attractant I'm gonna put in front of one of my cameras. Look at all these. Thirteen dollars. Nine ten what that's almost ten dollars. Look at that for a dollar all that. I thought I might be able to put that on my trail cameras so animals don't smell that a human was there. Those are old trail cameras I no longer use anymore. Kind of obsolete and low quality. Also, three of them are broken. No, two of them are broken. Two of them work. That was actually very reliable. That's the cheapest camera you can get at Walmart. They still sell it to this day, but a newer model. Great. These ones, Wild Game Innovation ones, they're horrible. Those are the new ones. Those are three I haven't even put into service yet. Brand new ones from Amazon. See, I stock up on bug spray and recently sunscreen because I need to start protecting my skin. I'm always out and getting burned. Even when driving, I sometimes need sunscreen. There's bear spray. Cover, uh, carry that in the West. This is... Some people say that's stupid air in a can. This is great for cleaning out charging ports. You ever walk with your phone in the rain and it gives you that notification? You can't charge it because there's water in the port. Wait for it to dry. But you may... Wireless charge right now. Take a squirt of this in the side and right inside the charging port dries it instantly. Great product. Yeah, like the phone I'm using now to record. This thing is, I think it's waterproof up to 12 feet for, I think, nine hours or six hours, something like that extreme. Yeah. So it's waterproof, but it needs to be blown out to be able to charge properly or you got to let it sit and dry for quite a bit here's extra batteries for the trail cams those walmart ones they will not accept rechargeable batteries they will read dead because these output a slightly lower voltage but they work perfect in the new cameras saves a lot of money when you're constantly leaving trail cameras out 
And I got a lot of them. And here's four of them right there in that frame. Three new ones will be put into service as soon as unclogging season starts in the spring, usually around April. Recently got a lot of bins help me or help trying to help myself organize, get a little better at that. There's a bunch of SD cards we'll be using soon. Let's see, on my cameras, I use 32. These are for the trail cameras, all the 32 ones. And in my phone, I use the terabyte cards. And camera number two is an older phone, and that's the biggest it can accept. So that's what that is for. Got a bunch of zip ties. Plastic camera rig I love. Metal one is really strong, but the metal one makes little noises, I, in my opinion. There's some glasses. When we're doing a video where you need safety glasses, here's just a bunch of office supplies. In case we're near a wildfire or we need a respirator to go somewhere. That respirator is really cool. I bought that at a tag sale. I can't believe it. Really cool. Don't know how functional it is, though. Right here. I want to make a video at some point. Surviving a very cold night with this $2 tent on eBay. $2 emergency tent. I'm going to see how that works. Surviving with just that thing. There's some sleeping bags when it's really cold. More camera boxes. What else to show you in here? Mm. That's an organization of my clothes right here. Picture my father up there. I thought that was kind of cool. I found that little hat came off some other figure. I gotta feed the leech sometime soon. It's now been like 14 months since he's had food, and they can go up to 18 when they're this age, but I'm not gonna feed it off myself. I'm trying to find it a new food. I've already gone through a few things. Worst case, I'll kind of have to feed it again, but I'm gonna try. I bought a, a large frozen rat made for a snake, but when you defrost it, there's still blood because they. They just froze them, and I'm hoping when it's warm it might try to drink it out of that, but I don't think it's going to work. I literally called a bunch of farms. No one's willing to sell me fresh blood. The butchers, you know, they're not willing to sell it. Bought a container online of fresh beef blood with express shipping. Never showed up. So, yeah, I'm going to try feeding it a frozen mouse. Look at those beautiful insulators. I found that one around here somewhere. Found that one right there in um, Montana while exploring a culvert. I actually picked that up in the video. Didn't show myself taking it, but I re later thought to because it's just going to get washed down the culvert. And that one right there I found while walking in the desert fairly close to some railroad tracks in California the same day we filmed the... Um, what are the mountains? Donner Pass abandoned tunnels and train sheds, uh, snow sheds. Yep, it's my collection of really old canned foods. You guys want to see a. Okay, the one that says fake meat. That is Burger King's Impossible Burger. And I think it's been almost three years. I think it has. And this is the real burger. Look at that. It literally looks like a pile of poop, doesn't it? Really gross. There's still a little bit of mold active on it. Still, wow, the part where it deprived of oxygen still looks like a bun. There's a lot of mold active on the fake burger. And look, the burger, everything around it, like the vegetables and bun, kind of deflated. But look, the half a patty still kept its shape. Isn't that weird? And look, the bottom, you can still see the bun when it's deprived of oxygen. And it looks like the bun kind of survives. Here's some new bottles of Coke. We can open that up in a video sometime. Those are seeds to do a video next year of sustainable vegetable garden at home. Right there is minced meat from the 1930s. Oh, I love these things here. Look at these. Office toys. This is a note someone left me. 
a while back. They literally put that underneath my magnetic tripod. They found that, found it. One of my cameras when they were exploring a culvert themselves. So this was just a video showing you. Just going to show you those boxes and the tools I use. But it turned into something else. This kind of bored. Kind of sleepy. I think I stood near that stove and I think I'm getting a little bit of a heat stroke. I'm not going to go back in there tonight. I'm just going to have a drink. Kind of losing my voice too through this video. I feel very dehydrated from that stove. Got to work smarter tomorrow. Thanks for watching.